Keith, let us start with you. You put out a note a couple of days ago. Tech extended short term, but far from bubble extremes. I could probably find some valuation metrics, some earnings metrics that would put us close to some of those. Why do you feel like we're still safe? You recently upgraded certain stocks. Yeah, well, first, uh, great to be with you, Brian, especially, you know, it's better than 5.50 in the morning like it's been in the past. Um, <laughs> so <it's, laughs> Thank God. It's, thank God. Um, hey, so as far as the overall tech sector, I mean, obviously, you're seeing things on a short-term basis becoming a bit stretched. But there's been some comparisons back to the tech bubble. I started my career during the tech bubble. And, and, and when I look at returns and I look at valuations as a whole and aggregate, it's a lot different. I mean, you know, we look at the last year, tech's up about 27, 28 percent. The year into the tech bubble or to the tech bubble peak, we were up over 100 percent. And then we also had multi years of this. We have to remember tech was down 34, 35 percent last year. And a lot of that rebound is happening now. Valuations are certainly rich, um, you know, around 27 times on the S&P technology sector. But that's about half of the, um, the, um, the valuation back during the tech bubble. And I think something that's important and kind of something that shifted our view somewhat is that when we had this kind of, you know, AI moment or iPhone moment, you know, I think a lot of corporations now, even if we have an economic slowdown that we still expect, they're going to still have to invest in tech or feel or, or, or you know, there's a fear they would be left behind and become obsolete. So I think the earning trends, the reason why you're in tech is for earnings. I think those earning trends relative to the market will continue to stay stronger uh, for over the next year. We talked about it earlier at the top of the show, Keith, that and it was Cheryl Young's stat. I'll probably butcher it, but I'm going to say it, it was like 95 percent of the S&P 500's return was just 10 stocks. I get it. If you own the S&P as, as an ETF, you don't care because you're making money regardless. But man, that's got to be extreme, extreme narrowness. Does that, is that worry you at all? And is there opportunity on the other side? I want to buy stuff that's low and sell it high. Yeah, no. yeah, it's a good point. Everyone's been talking about breath. And, you know, what we've seen more recently is breath has been casting up to the other 90, uh, you know, those magnificent seven, mag magnificent eight. So what we did more recently, if you think about it, before the last week, we upgraded equities back to neutral in the beginning of the month. And our thesis at that point is a lot of these, the average stock was reflecting some of the concerns we were, you know, as far as the Fed and some of the weakness that we see in the economy, they were flat for the year. So what we did in our portfolios is we actually added to the equal weighted S&P. We still have the large cap, you know, the market cap S&P, which has more tech. Um, and, and then as far from, from a sector strategy, uh, we also upgraded industrials a couple of weeks ago. And look at that sector. It's, it's making a 52-week high. has some good secular tailwinds as far as the spe defense spending, infrastructure spending as well. So I do think there's some rotation. Longer term for tech, you know, we've been overweight tech since March. We would stick with tech, but we would be more apt to buy on pullbacks as opposed to aggressively chase here after such a big run. Keith Lerner, truest. Keith, always appreciate it. And I always appreciated you getting up early as well, my man. Thank you.